This is News 24 Live. If you're confused by the setting that we're in today, I'm at the ANN 7 studios to sit down with the CEO of Oak Bay Holdings to discuss some of the articles that we've seen in the Sunday papers. And it really does seem, Nazim, like uh, your company is the gift that keeps on giving. Stories in the City Press, stories in the Sunday Times. What was it like opening up the papers this morning? Well, a bit uh, shocking, you know. We thought that we'd ended uh, all this nonsense uh, once the ANC pronounced on its investigation yet only to see the stories this morning. And perhaps the worry for us is just the lack of information, the lack of facts, the twisting of facts that appeared in the newspapers today. The Sunday Times story, you know, how do you make such serious accusations uh, without naming any single source? Mm. Uh, our challenge to them today, and I want to make it through your medium, let the Sunday Times come on air with us. Let's have that debate today. We're ready to have that debate with any journalist, any time. So you've spoken about the Sunday Times stories there. There's also the story in the City Press. And I think mm. for the sake of our audience, it's probably worth just going over the two themes. So mm. in the City Press article, front page, they're talking about coal and a deal involving a company of which you are the main shareholder making with ESCOM. And then we have the story in the Sunday Times. Just for, for the benefit of our viewers, can you summarize what's the deal? Or as you interpret it, what's the deal? The Sunday Times story or the City Press story? The, let's start with the Sunday Times. The Sunday Times story, the accusation is that we've somehow or other broken some laws by uh, taking money out of the country. Again, our challenge is, you know, you cannot be investigated through nameless sources using, let me say, uh, media that don't apply minds. You know, we're sure. very open to any question which is based on solid information, solid accusations. Okay. Right now, if the Reserve Bank wants to investigate us, we're very happy to take that yes, investigation. Yes, and that's quite, quite right. Uh, that's what you said in your statement. So my question then to you is, if you're aware of any legitimate existing investigation on the part of the Reserve Bank and the Financial Intelligence Center into deposits that Oak Bay has made and any use of the Bank of Baroda in terms of bringing money in mm -hmm. to those accounts and then according to the Sunday Times article, the money disappears. We don't know where it goes. Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm very surprised that they have that kind of detailed access to our, our bank accounts, first of all. But absolute rubbish, absolute nonsense. I, I nearly use the word that you'd have to bleep out. <laughs> but, you know, the Sunday Times, we become accustomed to that. They wrote the very bad story about Graham Smith and his divorce. They've written mm -hmm. about so many stories they've apologized for. So Simply, you know, we've, we've discounted them for mm -hmm. fact, to be very honest with you. So right just, now, just our challenge is... Yeah. Just to be clear, Nazim, so you're saying nothing. there's no, no investigation you're aware of on there's the part no of the There's no investigation I'm aware of. There's no wrongdoing that I'm aware of. There's no wrongdoing that I'm... You know, if there is any wrongdoing, I'm prepared to take the responsibility for it. All right. But right now, our invitation to the Sunday Times, to the Reserve Bank, is show us where you have evidence of any wrongdoing. Okay. But we cannot continue with nameless, faceless accusations. Yes. And that's what they do week in and week out. Yeah. On City Press, I know it's part of your group, so my apologies for that. That's fine. It's but not, Susan that, not Comrie, a newspaper I own personally. So. But Susan Comrie, I think, uh, links so many unlinked issues. She, she excludes critical and very important information. The harsh reality, Tegeta is saving ESCOM 2 billion rand this year. How do you come to that? Well, the Exaro contract, which ended at the end of December, was at 1,132 rand per ton. Mm -hmm. Together, together with six others, are supplying at under 500 rand a ton. But at the time Times that Together got hold of, uh, of the Optimum uh, mine, they were selling coal at a much lower price than the New Deal. There was an agreed deal. Brian Malefe himself spoke about being pleased that they could keep mm. that per tonnage cost down. Mm. And then when the new deal was made for the six-month contract, mm. that uh, price ballooned up to over 400 explain. grand. Maybe let me explain something to you. The okay. price of coal is based on the quality of the coal you sell. Mm. So each of, the coal, sorry, each of the power stations have very different technical specifications. So the, sec the coal that goes to Endrina, which is the historical contract, yes. is not the same quality of coal that goes to Onnit. It's a higher okay. quality that goes to Onnit. It's almost export quality. So are you saying then that the City Press article is incorrect in saying that you're taking coal away from Endrina and giving it to Onnit? Absolutely correct. And you know, the, the, the sad thing for me is it's published as fact mm. and there will be no effort to correct it by City Press. Sure. The harsh reality is whatever we owe in terms of coal supply to Endrina, we're sticking to. Okay. And whatever let's just ESCOM be clear demands, that, sorry, just on that, let's be clear that you aren't meeting your targets for the existing contract that you inherited when you took over that company that was facing grave financial correct. problems. Whatever ESCOM requires from us on Endrina, yes. we are supplying. 
but you're not meeting that target unless ESCOM's brought ESCOM that target down. ESCOM has brought down. it down, and I think I saw a statement earlier today mm. by ESCOM where they've said they have brought it down to get rid of stockpiles they've got on the ground, and because their burn rate has been lower. Yes. So ESCOM has said that in its statement. Yeah. So there's nothing untoward in it, mm. but it seems that City Press wants to make something untoward in it. Well, I mean, you've got, to, you've got to admit, a story with the Guptas in the headlines and with Oak mm. Bay, which is affiliated with the Guptas, does, does grab the attention of the South African public. You know, I, I'm not going to admit it. I'm going to question it. Mm. Because, you know, we are 5% supplier to ESCOM. The 80% who gobble up the rest of ESCOM's mm. uh, coal supply funding. I suppose in that case, the question becomes, what are the, the links? What are the connections? And, and it must be said that the Gupta family has a reputation, at least, of being <laughs> very close to President Jacob Zuma and his family. And then the second largest shareholder in, um, in the company is his son. So there yeah. are those interesting connections that might be interesting to, to the public, to readers. But you know, very often, you know, they say that um, there are three kinds of journalists, one who can count and one who can't count. Um, so, you know, in many <laughs> Was cases... Was that said uh, by a journalist who couldn't count, probably. Correctly, correct. But, you know, what it does tell us mm. is the kind of leaps to, con to, to, to conclusions that some journalists make. Okay. And you're I alleging suppose, that's what happened in the same I'm going to say article. that in a lot of ways. Because, yeah. you know, let's deal with this issue of state, state capture. Mm. The issue of state capture is, is absolute nonsense. I'm glad the ANC has completed in, its investigation. An but, investigation, to be clear, that the South African Communist Party is not happy with. And that, that is their right, and mm. we're happy that any other process follows that. But uh, KPMG has been our auditors for 16 years till they, till they resign the account. Yeah. They, their balance sheets will show you 1% of our business comes from government. In terms of coal contracts, and let me deal with ESCOM very quickly, we've only had ESCOM coal contracts since March last year. Yeah. Uh, until we closed the Optimum deal, which we bought from Glencore, uh, we were less than 1% of coal supply too to ESCOM. Mm. So we actually are nothing in ESCOM's world. For now at least. And that, that does bring me to an interesting question because if we look at Optimum, you kind of bought a lemon. You know, you bought, you bought a mine that was really <laughs> in, in the bin almost mm. and losing lots of money, you know, by the city press estimate, which you may quibble, three million a day, just mm. really not productive, really hitting the skids. And now you seem to be turning it around and you have as Oak Bay issued statements on the kind of viability of the company Certainly. going, the mine going forward. Mm. But my question then is, if you only have a six-month contract, which you argue is perfectly fine with ESCOM and it's one of five suppliers, so there's nothing untoward there, how are you going to sustain the, the kind of viability of that mine down the line once your six-month contract is up? Because the, the final bidder, the final supplier, requires those who bid it mm. in 2015 to, to step forward, Certainly. and that doesn't include you. So who are you going to mm. sell your coal to? Well, you know, we've not opened an, escort, an export line at all. Okay. Uh, export must be an option for us to consider. We have the quality of coal to export. Sure. Uh, Glencore has exported coal through that, through that mine. So we have that ability as well. Okay. So, you know, from our point of view is what have we done so far? We've looked at costs in the business yeah. and we have reduced some costs quite significantly. Uh, we, we're known to be turnaround specialists. Yes. Uh, we've and turned that's around, in the City Press article. We've turned, we've turned around Shiva. But, you know, the difficulty facing us is, you know, when you, uh, my apologies for saying it, when you're not white mm. and you come into that environment, people always question how you're going to do that. Okay. We're going to do it through hard work, through innovation, through entrepreneurship. When you say when you're not white and you step into mm. that space, are you talking about the mining space? I talk about any space, really. But, you know, the number of times we've been questioned about if so-and-so couldn't do it, how can you do it? Mm. You know, we bring our own different approach to our business, you know. Yeah. Uh, we bring our different kind of excitement around the business. And I mean, it's such a great question because if you think about what happened with Glencore, you needed two odd billion rand for that final installment. And nobody knows where you got that money from, but it's a, mm. it's a key to the puzzle of how you turned around the business. How mm. did you manage to build up that capital, especially when all mm. the South African banks and your own auditors dropped you? Well, we approached the local banks in December last year because remember, to do a deal like this, you had to convince the seller mm. in last year that you had the funding. None of the local banks would help us. So we went to a foreign bank. So it was done through a combination of bank debt and our own internal funding. And which bank was it? Uh, for, the, for right now, I'm going to decline to answer that can you question. Give me a, can you give me a continent? No, my difficulty, my difficulty with answering that question, mm. as soon as we approach any bank to assist us, there's huge pressure brought on them not to assist us. Yes. 
And for that reason, we right. have to protect our banks right now. I suppose for anybody watching, it'd be very easy to make a link between the City Press story and a bank mentioned in the mm. Sunday Times story. Certainly. Are you and, in and a position a, to confirm or refute that? A, I'll leave you journalists to, to leap to another conclusion. And Miss Jim tomorrow Now you're to encouraging journalists to jump to conclusions. Well, you know, I've, I've, lost, I've lost faith in our, my old profession, oh to dear. be very frank with you. I've lost faith in them mm. in terms of just the quality of work they do right now. I want to come back to what you said about the City Press article and the fact that you're saying the quality of the whole profession provided to the one um, power station is very different from the quality mm. provided to the other. Where is mm. the proof of that? Where, is the, where are the empirical facts that journalists who want to be rigorous can refer to? Well, I'd suggest you ask ESCOM for that because if I give it to you, you won't believe it. Well, no, you <laughs> so, can't say that about me. Let's okay. not tar all journalists but with the same brush. I think it's the, essentially you can, say to, you can say to ESCOM, and ESCOM are brilliant at checking quality. Uh, stockpiles are checked on our sites. Stockpiles are checked on their side. Glencore has left us a world-class system to te test coal quality. Okay. Every five minutes, we can tell you the quality of coal in any one of the belts. Okay. Uh, but ESCOM will explain to you very, very carefully the specifications required at Indrina and the specifications required at Arnott. Okay. They're two very different coals. So let's just go back to the banks then. I want to find out, it's been fairly quiet since we heard you know, several banks in quick succession mm. dropping you, KMPG as well. Has there been any progress in terms of um, Oak Bay and your negotiations mm. with South African banks? I know a minister also mm. tried to kind of pull an olive branch mm. out and, and mm. rem remediate, you provide you know, sort mm. of uh, you know, mediation between the two parties. Unfortunately, unfortunately we've had no progress. Okay. It's one of the saddest things in my life. You know, I think some of us contributed in some small way to the revolution that happened in 1994, the peaceful resolution. And to see the banks act in this way is really very, very sad for me. To date, we don't know why they've done it. I've met with two of the banks that were willing to meet with us, mm. and not one of them can tell me what it is we've done wrong, other than broad statements. At this point, we do not have a South African bank. We're using right. one of the foreign banks, and yeah. we're, using, we're using them in a makeshift way. To keep the so doors you're open. using one of the foreign banks. So if there was one bank that helped you out in terms of buying up the shares, it was mm. probably the same bank. You're saying you have mm. one bank, not several overseas. Unfortunately, as I say to you, what we've seen is whoever comes close to us mm. is under huge pressure immediately. So Oak Bay has in, a single bank. We, we, we're working. We're working around banking. Let me say that to you. That's a bit vague. I'm trying to just ascertain, is it a single bank that you work with or is it several? I'm going to leave it at that right, right. now because I you think... You did say a single one earlier, so mm. I'm just going to put that down mm. on record. Um, if we move on then to um, the Sunday Times story today, can you're, you're not in a position then to clarify what's happening with the money that's coming into the country. Let me make it very, very clear. Yeah. In the 26 years that we've been in operation, not one single cent has left the country. Not, not in a suitcase then, carried by Zuma or one of his Absolutely family Absolutely not. The so Zuma where did Malema get that story from? That I would love you to, to answer that <laughs> question. But you know the science of it, and again my challenge is the science of it. Mm. Our biggest denomination is 200 Rand notes. Try and fit that now, my number of, of notes on a 737, but no journalist thinks that far. Mm. I'm, I'm sorry to make such a broad statement. All right. Now, let's go on then to the situation with Oak Bay and ESCOM. Um, this deal, you can confirm that there is a deal and it is for the right amount. Is, is City correct. Press correct I, on I, the I don't know if it's the right amount, but it's there or thereabouts. Okay. I did the deal, but unfortunately, okay. I'm, I'm uh, perhaps at an age where I forget things too much. Sure. But it's around, the, it's around 2 that amount. 2.1 million right. over six months. No, no, that is wrong. Billion. No, that is absolutely wrong. Okay. Sorry. Let me say to you, the, the 2.1 billion was the purchase price of Optimum. Okay. I think we bought, uh, we, they, they, we supplied them 1.250. I think it's around about five, 500 okay. million. Rand. And that excludes the transportation that costs? That excludes the transportation right. costs, correct. Yes. Why is that? Well, essentially, I mean, that's the way you do a deal with, with ESCOM mm. because the transportation between where you're leaving and where you're going Varies, varies from place to place. And with the fuel so price it's done, as well. It's done on a mileage basis and, on, on, uh, and, and uh, with due respect to the, the yeah. fuel pricing. So it's always done that way because as soon as you make it a fixed cost, somebody will lose in the process. Yes. In the City Press article, the writer also refers to the, the numbers that the Minister Lynn Brown gave in Parliament. And it was May of mm. last year, and I understand we've mm. had several fuel hikes since then. But neither of the, the figures that she gave, both the, the aggregate of mm. um, cost of a tonne of coal or the most expensive price, were above what you're now asking. Mm. So how do you explain mm. that? It's, it's, mm. There's quite a big discrepancy between the highest price, including transportation, that the Minister mm. gave in uh, mm. May of last year, mm. 
and, and what you're now signing oh. off to ESCOM? Well, I think, you know, I don't think there's a discrepancy. I think it's a question of comparing apples and pears. Mm. Uh, the harsh reality is that the historically advantaged companies, and I hope you understand what I mean by historically advantaged companies. I think I do, but maybe we should unpack have, that. The, several of them have many cost plus uh, contracts, and the cost plus contract includes an element of capital expenditure, which mm. ESCOM pays to them, and operational expenditure. So okay. I think the number could only be including the operational expenditure, but you have to include the capital expenditure because yeah. when you're comparing to our number, it includes capital and operational expenditure. So on a like-for-like -like basis, mm. we would love somebody to do an exercise that compares all these contracts. Yeah. So if anybody, and you know the difficulty, I think, the way we covered right now, the zone is on together, and we're forgetting the 80% of the supply that goes to the historically advantage. So maybe somebody one day will say, mm. let me understand the total supply. So you're saying the other four companies that are supplying are all historically advantaged companies? Primarily. The, Primarily. They make up 80% of the supply. 80% okay. is still the historically advantaged. Yeah. And what are those companies? Well, if I remember them correctly, Glencore would be one of them. Mm. Angler would be another one of them. BHP Bulletin would be another one of them. South 32 is another one, I, if I remember. I think okay. it's in the ESCOM statement yeah. uh, made today. So are you sort of interpreting this as a, a sort of bullying tactic or are you mm -hmm. sort of seeing something more sinister at work here? You know, from our point of view, I think we're in a, we've entered an environment which mm. used to be very settled. I think we've unsettled the environment as we did when we launched New Age. And I think when you unsettle competitors who've used to a particular comfort zone, yeah. it does cause discomfort on their sides. How I think you, what we've yeah. brought is, what we've also brought out now is a much more transparent measurement of coal. Uh, before this, four or five months ago, nobody was interested in the coal industry. Mm -hmm. We've come into it and it's, co cover it's got co more coverage than it's had probably in its entire history. So is this just a little step on the way to exporting coal? That's the long mm -hmm. game that you're playing? No, I think our game will be to have a mixture of everything. Okay. That will be our game. Uh, I think nobody can be beholden to one supplier. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to have, you have, sorry, one buyer. You have to have other buyers. So, you know, we have to find a mix. Uh, that would be our game. Are you hoping to include more ESCOM deals in that mix? We're going to be on the hunt. Okay. You know, our, our expectation is that we should have the same rights as anybody else to, to bid for ESCOM. Mm. Don't because you want to link us to Gupta or Zuma, exclude us. Okay. The, fa the shareholders have stepped away. I chair an executive committee. We take the day to do business decisions. We will bid for any contract that comes into the market. We'll do it on an arm's length basis, we'll do it on a transparent basis, and we'll make damn sure that we meet all the contractual obligations that ESCOM puts before us. Which may not stop journalists from writing more articles about your, your coal deals. I'll make you that forecast. It will not stop them. Yeah. But, you know, for us to allow journalists, particularly through their coverage, to bully us into submission is not going to happen. Mm. We will continue to grow our business. So while journalists are being bullies, in your words, you're being bullish. You're sticking in your heels and you're insistent that you'll keep person. going. As chief executive, I've got 7,500 employees and their families and their livelihoods mm. at risk. It is my responsibility to ensure that they keep their jobs and their livelihoods are protected. It's interesting you bring up uh, employees and jobs because that's something that's come up time and again in relation to the new age and ANN7 and some of the difficulties you face mm. with banks pulling out. Which uh, leads me to a question there um, about the ANN7 channel and the new age and whether you're sort of supportive of the, what the SABC's policy is. Mm. Are you mm. kind of siding with the SABC and saying we shouldn't show protest, we mm. shouldn't show any demonstrations, mm. it just incites violence, it incites aggression mm. on the part of p protesters? Mm. You know, I'm in a wonderful position of being on the commercial side of the business. So what I say doesn't really matter. Okay. So then you can <laughs> say what you think. I view I would support the SABC position. Okay. But at the end of the day, it will be up to the editor who is in charge of our TV station and the editor in charge of our newspaper to make that decision. Okay. You wouldn't see uh, it as censorship, for I, I certainly example. would not. I think, okay. you know, editors decide every day what to put into their media, what to they leave out of our media. Today, you took a decision to interview me. Uh, you could just have not take a decision not to do that. So mm -hmm. that's a decision that you take on a day-to-day -day basis, depending on the circumstances. Okay. But personally, I believe that we do, we do encourage violence. That is a belief I do have. As journalists, as yes, media. Yeah. Okay. Then also on media, I'm interested to know the, about the court bid that you um, re recently launched against Iqbal's survey. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, obviously Sekunjalu own over 55% of independent media. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your thoughts on where that case is going? Do you think you're going to win? Mm -hmm. Our view is that uh, if justice prevails, we will win. 
Uh, our agreement uh, is watertight. Mm. Our agreement is very, very clear. Uh, I'm covered by huge confidentialities on this one. Uh, but our view is that if justice prevails, we will win that bit. It does seem like you're having to put out quite a lot of fires all at once. You know, there's this happening with independent media, there's this happening with the coal mm. deal, there's this happening mm. with ANN7 and the new age, there's this happening with your banks. I mean, as a company, as you say, that's almost, you know, more than 20 years running, how are you coping with that kind of pressure? No, I think, you know, um, let me start with the shareholder. We have a wonderful shareholder. Mm. Uh, what we read in the media is so far remote to what is reality is unbelievable. They've empowered us fully. When, when the trouble started, they said to us, to save this company, let us step away. And they've, lived with it. they've lived by that decision. Mm. I'm surrounded by a wonderful group of executives. Uh, we share this responsibility, I think, very, very willingly. Not mm. one of them is scared to put in the extra hours, to put in the extra effort. Is but there you know, still consultation? Is there still, you know, meeting and talking, even though, you know, they're not acting well, shareholders? The shareholders have good rights as well. Mm. You know, as CEO, I, I, I need to brief them on a regular basis on what's happening in the business. Okay. But the amazing thing for me is their view essentially is, great job, go ahead. Uh, on the odd occasion when I've looked for advice, they've said to me, it's your decision. Oh. Uh, which is, uh, it places a huge onus on, uh, onus on us to get the business right. Yeah. And, and perhaps that's what drives us today. Maybe. Mm. I suppose the, the other thing is that it could suggest that you have the same sympathies. So there's no worry about needing to consult if, if it's understood that you have the same agenda or the same kind of priorities. And so mm. you just kind of do the bidding of, mm. of what they'd want anyway. Well, I think if the bidding is to run a success, successful business mm. that contributes positively to South Africa's overall well-being, yes, we share that. We certainly share that. Sure. Uh, I think uh, the principles we share also is we will be arm's length in our transactions, we will be transparent in our actions. Okay. And that's why we can boldly say to anybody, bring us a single shred of evidence we've done wrong. Because we know we've done no wrong. And that's what your kind of grievance is with the stories in today's Sunday mm. papers. Correct. I think for a lot of South Africans who are watching this, it's going to be difficult hearing, you know, hearing you say you see the company as one that does good for South Africa, creates jobs, employs people, is innovating, as you argue, in the coal sector. Because there is such a strong affiliation with the Guptas, who have a strong affiliation to Zuma, mm. and it's all seen as being a little bit stodgy, a little, mm. you know, a little bit strange, a little bit off kilter. Mm. What would you say to those critics? You know, I'll say to those critics, Ben, um, put aside what you're reading in the newspapers. Mm. Consider the facts. So what are the facts right now? 1% of our turnover comes from government business. We've not received one single mining license from DMR. Mm. Each one have been, has been purchased commercially. We have to compete with everybody else in every aspect. You know, if anything, we are over-scrutinized compared to anybody else. I was very, very surprised to see the ESCOM statement this afternoon that all of our contracts had been audited by the Auditor General of South Africa and National Treasury. Sure. Why would why would to get these contracts be singled out for that kind of scrutiny? Why would you not look at the other 80%? Yeah. You know, and it's really a very, very strong position on, on, on my point of view. On I the mean, Sunday I can Times think story, of some answers to, to your question but, why. Uh, but on the Sunday Times story, I'm saying, you know, since when do nameless sources justify mm. writing a front page lead story? And for that mm. reason, I'd say to the Sunday Times, let us debate this thing face to face yeah. in a live environment. I'm ready for the Sunday Times in a live environment. Okay. But their kind of journalism is real gutter journalism. I, you know, I used to work at the Sunday Times. I was an assistant editor there. Mm. I'm really, I don't know why I mentioned that. I'm embarrassed by that affiliation, by what they're doing today. But as someone who worked at the Sunday Times, you must understand the value of having nameless sources in certain instances. You can't reveal the names of a source. But you know, part of my position as a journalist and my training as a journalist, even at the Sunday Times at that stage, you cannot rely on nameless sources who are not going to stand by the story. Uh, you have to get on the record kind of confirmation. Mm. And there is no kind of, there is no conf on the record confirmation of that allegation. And it's a very, very serious allegation. Yeah. So, you know, to come back to your question, how many normal South Africans will believe a nameless source because it appeared in the Sunday Times? And that is the damage that's been done to our mm. business. It's, it's, it's really serious damage that's been done, I think, in a careless manner. Yeah. I want to hone in on your point about your government contracts being mm. a small sliver of what you do and and that 
rests on the argument that government and business are very far removed. But mm. with tenders, with the kind of work mm. that government needs done, with the resources government needs supply, coal is mm. a perfect example, the, the division between private business, mm. a commercial business, and the government sector is, is, is almost non-existent. There's a kind of symbiotic relationship sure. at the best of times between the two. So even if you do argue, you know, our government contracts are minimal, if you're dealing with parastatals or you're dealing with other entities that are linked to government by a few steps, you end up profiting, let's say, in a hypothetical situation from mm. close relationships with government employees, whether or not you are directly going to a government office and getting mm. something rubber stamped. But how does it benefit us? Because I'm including parastatals in my 1%. Let me go around our group. In our IT business, uh, Sahara, we don't do government business at all. It's a board resolution. We tried to uplift it, but by that time the ship had sailed. It was a decision taken when President Zuma took office, mm. that we would not do government business in that business. When we launched New Age, certainly we did do uh, government business, yes. but our share of the total market is about 5%. In fact, your group is probably dominant in that space. I love how you say uh, my group. I don't even have <laughs> shares in the company. But I'm saying your group is much bigger in terms of government advertising. Mm. So, you know, I perhaps should accuse Media24 of being capturing government for government advertising. Uh, because your group is so much bigger in that area. Well, I certainly hope our board members are, are watching uh, this video and then maybe mm, they can respond to your I, I would love to have that debate with them as well. And also uh, live, probably. Pr probably live. I, live, I'm very happy to do, okay. do that, simply because I'm saying to you, Media24 has a greater RAND value than mm. we have, much greater. Uh, much, much greater. On, on ANN7, I, we probably have 0.2% of, of government spend comes our way. Uh, I cannot say the same for, for the us. SDV and MNET. You know. Well, uh, I'm not privy to our advertising budget, so I'm really stuck for comment on that one. I just want to then come down to the kind of overall sort of message that we can take away from this interview. Sort of that uh, Oak Bay Group feels you're digging in your heels, you stand by your conduct, you stand by your contract with ESCOM. Can you just wrap up kind of where you're at today following these Sunday stories? Well, you know, I, I think we're very disappointed by the media coverage this morning. I think, you know, we took, we took a very, we, we were hurt by a very big storm mm -hmm. over the last few months. Things had quieted down and all of a sudden we see these kind of purposeless attacks on our integrity, on our group and our businesses. You know, this is just at the stage where we thought we were coming out of the storm mm -hmm. and hoping that we can re mend fences, fix our relationships with banks, uh, and then get back to normal. Sure. We want to run our business. We don't want to be involved in politics. We want nothing to do with that area. Leave us to run our business. So when I say we're bullish, we're bullish about running our business and looking after the livelihoods of our 7,500 staff. That's the most important thing to me right now. Well, I mean, there you have it from the CEO of the Oak Bay Group sitting down with News24. If you'd like to comment on this interview and continue the discussion, you can tweet us at News24 or me on my Twitter account at ERM Bates. And Nazim, thank you so much for your time. I guess it's up to our viewers now to decide what they make of your comments. Thank you very much. Thank you.